Welcome. So, today I'm pretty excited because, as you can see, for the first time in a long time, I'm getting my DeWalt radio alarm saw set up and operational. And this is really exciting because this is, uh, this is a saw that I learned carpentry on when I was 11 years old. And uh, it's the saw that was my grandfather's saw. Uh, and I inherited it after he died. So this is, um, this is a special saw, uh, kind of a special experience. It's something that uh, I'm really excited about. So now I'm setting it up. Um, got most of it set up already, uh, except for the cooling fan, which is still a work in progress. Uh, but the main thing here is to build a table because saws really is only, only as good as the table. Uh, when I moved up here from LA to Washington, it's a pretty long drive, and completely disassembled this to ship it up here. And the table on it at the time was just two by fours, uh, and they were old and, and not worth saving. So I tore them all up, threw them away, and just chipped the saw. Now I need a table. My plan is that this is going to be the best saw table ever. I tend to be pretty ambitious. It could well be a terrible idea. But in my delusional ramblings, uh, my thought is to turn this uh, into the wooden part of this saw table. Now this is just some firewood. Um, someone was cutting down a maple tree. And I got some rounds from that they cut up, and I kind of cut them into this shape and dried them. Um, so I got this stuff for free, but it's beautiful wood, and I think it'll be really good if I can just kind of finish it down and do a smooth working surface. So with that, I will take this piece over to some sawhorses and start the laborious process of kind of cleaning this up. So my first task in getting this actually usable and not just a chunk of firewood is uh, to get it squared up and smoothed out. So I'm going to start there. Let's see, which side is better? They're both terrible. Right, so the center of the tree is kind of the weakest part where you have that um, heartwood. Um, so I want to take as much as possible from the center part of the tree, which is this far side. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to get this part smooth. And then once this is smooth, the thickness thing I'm going to take from this other side so that I'm taking as much as possible from the part that was closest to the center of the tree. Um, but yeah, first let's kind of knock down these high spots. Now I'm starting here with the scrub plane. This has a curved blade and it just takes large bites out of the wood. Useful for precisely this application where you've got to really go a long way because as you can see you can see that this is really far off of smooth and also that I have an office job and I'm out of shape. This is going to be the prettiest saw table I've ever built. A substantial upgrade for sure. Whew. My weak IT arms are used to packing at a keyboard and I've gotten soft. But regardless, I've still managed to get basically all of the chainsaw grooves and things out, get it more or less flat. I've moved on to the joiner plane, much longer, wider, so that it can 
kind of smooth out bellies and warps. And as I'm working, I have two framing squares so I can check that it's straight, make sure there's not daylight underneath it, uh, which, you know, there is, of course, because it's a work in progress, but uh, also uh, putting it on here like this, I can see if there are twists. So I'm sighting down here and you can see if like one of these is up like that. You'll be able to see that it's twisted pretty close. I would say that this corner right here is maybe a little bit high. So I do this every so often because it's really easy to just work and work and then like work in a really big twist in it. And that's hard to get out. So, you know, as I'm kind of working, trying to get it straight and also not twisted. I'm pretty pleased with that. The chainsaw marks are out. It's reasonably straight. It's not twisted or anything. It's reasonably smooth. Flat enough to where I can put it down uh, and it won't rock. As a side note, it's absolutely beautiful wood. I just love this. And I got this for free. Like, it's one of the perks of living in the Pacific Northwest. Trees are basically weeds. Um, and, you know, people need to cut them down all the time because they're too close to a house, like this one was. And, uh, yeah, free firewood. Um, but, man, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And I'm really happy that I'm able to make something out of it. And then it's going to Masa, which I'm also really, uh, really like. So I think this will be cool. I've got a plan for the other surface. So I think now that this is fairly smooth, I can put this down and it won't rock. It's got a solid surface to work off of. And I can actually use the saw to kind of cut some marks in here and, uh, and get this surface kind of level to the saw. And that will actually be the best way to get it level to the saw because the saw blade will be cutting it. Um, so that's the plan. We'll see how it works. First, I'm going to kind of attach this where it needs to go. Okay, I got the board in position, screwed down. Here goes nothing. All right, last but not least, I think I'm going to rub some linseed oil on here to kind of try and help seal and protect it since it's going to be outside. And I don't want the moisture getting in here and causing it to split and check and that sort of thing. So hopefully that will help. I don't really know. I don't know uh, the best thing to use. But yeah, I'm going to try this. Alright, well, thanks for joining me. Definitely had fun on this project. Uh, I think I've got an excellent start as this will be the cutting surface. Got something else in mind for the extensions of the saw, which we'll take a look at later. Uh, but for now, I think I've managed to create essentially a cutting board get it? It's, it's a cutting board because it looks like a cutting board, but also for cutting things on, on the saw.